The theme for this session is future AR technologies that are actually here today. And you're going to see some amazing presentations. We have four speakers in the session. And let me introduce the first. Uh, coming all the way from Scandinavia, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Oscar Linde from 13th Lab. Thank you. Uh, okay, so, so I'm going to speak a bit about 13th Lab and what we do. Uh, we're based in Sweden, funded in 2010, uh, and we are a core technology developer company. We, we develop technology ourselves. Uh, everything we do is 100% is in-house developed. Uh, we are focused on mobile computer vision and uh, a few highlights of our company. We were, were the first company to bring uh, SLAM technology to consumers. We released a game called Ball Invasion in the summer 2011 using this technology. Uh, we were also the first to bring uh, uh, SLAM to mobile developers with a Point Cloud SDK released early in 2012. Okay, so, so what's SLAM then? Visual SLAM and SLAM uh, is uh, something called simultaneous localization mapping, and that's a concept developed uh, by the remote robotics community originally. Uh, the idea is to allow a robot to navigate and, un and map an unknown environment. Uh, in, uh, it's used, for example, by the Mars rovers and similar, but in, in our case, uh, we do something called visual SLAM. That means that it's the visual sensor that's the most important sensor for navigation. And in the case of, of uh, mobile devices, we normally have just a single camera, so we, we have to, to do with monocular vision. Uh, so, so why do you want to use SLAM for, for AR then? Well, basically what SLAM does is that it turns the camera into a positioning sensor. It solves the fundamental problem of, of, of positioning the device versus the structure of the environment. Uh, it allows creation of sparse 3D maps and um, it allows tracking of a device outside of a known environment. Uh, it also handles changing environments. So i just give you a very short uh, sample of what you can do with, with SLAM. Okay. Uh, regarding SLAM, we uh, think that we are the best in class uh, of supplying this to, to mobile developers for iOS and Android, uh, at least according to, to our licensing partners we are. Uh, and the metrics we measure, measure that by is speed, stability, speed, stability, accuracy, and robustness. We also do image recognition and tracking. Uh, one of the things this allows us is to utilize SLAM uh, w with an accurate scale based on, on a reference marker, for example. When it comes to, to AR and use cases, we at 13th Lab think a bit differently about this. Uh, we try to, to stay away from gimmicky stuff. Uh, we don't do, uh, do, uh, do any marketing use cases and, and one-offs. We, we try to find utility in this. And one of the, the, the things that we, we have realized is that uh, AR works very well as a user interface to interact with the world. Uh, we, we believe that reality needs a user interface, and, and uh, what else to use than HTML? It's, it's a very basic technology for that. Uh, so, for example, we, did, we ha have been doing some interactive print, and one of the first things we did was uh, putting a video on, on side on a printed magazine, uh, fitting it 
perfectly with, with the photo of the video inside and playing it uh, in, uh, in, with correct uh, perspective projections. And it turned out that it looked very cool, but it was not a very good use case in the long run. Uh, when it comes to consuming many types of content, such as video and images and uh, text and so on, uh, a full screen view and on, the, on the device is a much better uh, use case. So, so we've, we try to focus on, on making AR the, the user interface rather than the presentation platform for, for many kinds of content. Okay, so a bit about our future development roadmap. Uh, we, we try to stay best in class on technology uh, we're not working on, on uh, developing many uh, applications on top of it. So the, the basic premise we're working on is, is making the technology work on larger areas. We're today working on uh, room-sized environments. We're working on, on being able to, to do complete buildings, for example, uh, handling of pre-recorded reference maps of changing environments, and also handle more challenging environments such as environments where you have lots of changing lightning and outdoors, different seasons and so on. And we're also working on collaborative map building and, and, and of course also new form factors such as wearables. We have three development platforms based on our technology. Uh, a high level platform, the point cloud browser that's basically based on X, XML JavaScript. We have a mid-level uh, Unity plugin and a low-level platform that's uh, C, C++ based. These are available for, for both iOS and, and Android. We also work with a few major licensing partners, such as uh, Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, Metro, the world's largest free newspaper, and uh, Autodesk, and, uh, and one of the major game developer studios. Uh, one of the applications that has been developed on top of our platform is Minecraft Reality. It's, it's an application available for iOS today, and it's, it's been quite successful so far. Our users have placed more than one, or close to one million creations in the real world using this. I'll show you a video demonstrating this. What you see here is, is creations people have made inside the game of Minecraft and then being able to, to bring them out 